All right, let's get to our last player of the day, Zonovan Knight. Uh, Dynasty League football, November start of AP, unranked in 84, running backs drafted. He was undrafted in the NFL draft. He was undrafted in rookie drafts, but he got signed by the Jets, and he started to find a role for himself here. Even before Michael Carter went down with his injury, he was splitting with Michael Carter in that game against Chicago. But over the last three games, he's averaging... 15.3 uh, rushing attempts, 76.7 yards, just a third of a touchdown. He's also getting a little over three targets, three catches, 22.7 yards a game. Really getting in there and being impactful for the Jets. I think he looks the part. Like, he looks good. He's bouncing off of contact, uh, making good runs for that offense. Like I said, he was already splitting time with Michael Carter before Carter got hurt. So I think like they had it in the plans to begin with, in a way. They brought in James Robinson, and that didn't work out at all. And uh, they decided that he was going to be the next one up. And he's he's been doing the best with his opportunities, I would say. Kevin, do we want to invest in him at all, even though he is this, you know, coming from nothing? Like he, he basically holds no value at this point. Uh, what do we do? I think he's a fine, at least, stash contingency play. I mean, the other backs, James Robinson's a free agent. Ty Johnson's a free agent. So there's clearly an opening there behind Brees Hall uh, as far as another, you know, the backup or a contingent play running back. So I'd be fine, you know, picking, you know, you probably pick them up for just a little bit of fab and or maybe a lot of fab depending on your league. But, uh, you know, if you picked him up, he's probably going to be a stash at the very least next year, provided the Jets, you know, we'll see what they do as far as the running back position. They're going to probably have to pick somebody up uh, or draft somebody, whether, whether the case and, uh, you know, Michael Carter's still there, obviously. But I think it's just kind of muddy behind uh, Brees Hall. I think Knight's certainly fine for the rest of the year, but I just do not see... I just don't see a path with Brees Hall there. It all depends on Brees Hall, you know, whether his, uh, you know, his rehab's going to, uh, you know, dip into 2023 or not. More than likely not, but anything's possible. We saw how long, you know, J.K. Dobbins, certainly more a complex injury, um, you know, but these injuries aren't all one in, you know, black and white. There are a lot of shades of gray with it. So, um, yeah, Knight's a very... Can, very nice contingent play for me. I think he has shown he's belonged. I think he will be in the league. Um, he's only 21 years old. Um, you know, there's certainly room to grow, room to improve. I just don't know if, you know, anything other than a contingent play, but you know what? I've been proven wrong before. Uh, he's my type of running back that I'll be, uh, you know, drafting certainly in, in redraft and in dynasty startups as, you know, collecting my uh, MacGyver-esque backup running back contingent, but I mean, expecting anything more than, you know, spot start duty, I think is uh, a little much. Yeah, I I think there's a possibility that he's like a sneaky, like, playoff push by for contenders. Just because I think there's a chance he's like a low-end RB2 rest of the season. Just because of the amount of opportunities yeah. he's getting in the offense. Like, a third-round pick for Zonovan Knight right now to, like, shore up a spot where maybe you just incurred an injury or to like just solidify depth for the playoff push. So you have some options. I don't mind that. Uh, Skylar, what do we think? Yeah. Just given his playoff schedule and his role within this team, I think it is, it's a little, it is a little short to sell him for just like a raw third type thing. So if you are a playoff team and you are trying to share up a flex or get an RB, a little depth at RB two, a backup second option, um, I'm totally fine with sending a late third for Zonovan Knight. I'm usually a little stingy when it comes to buying these guys, you know, like an undrafted type free agent. But I'm looking, you know, you see Detroit week 15, which early in the season was the matchup to target. They have in the last month, though, been one of the best in the league against the run. They've actually been top third over the last month. Um, but, you know, for the season, kind of middle of the pack. Jacksonville's been middle of the pack. Uh, over the last month, but they've been top, you know, on the season, it's a top third matchup and Seattle all year has been a top three matchup for running back. Those are your three matches for playoffs. And he's a back where, you know, the jets like to run their offense on the, through the ground. That's really how they like to do. And they like to have a first second down grinder. And then the pass catching role. I think Michael Carter has that pass catching kind of job secured. I don't think he steps in more than what people would than what some people expect him to. He's he's a pure committee back. We love Michael Carter as a player, but he's nothing more than that. He will always be. That's what he was in college. That's what he was when he came into the league the first year. It's what he is with Brees Hall. It's what he is even with Zonovan Knight. Uh, James Robinson, I think at this point, is just you can forget about him as far as for dynasty purposes at the moment. You know, Zonovan Knight has that 
that role so secured up, but I think it's going to get 15 carries. You hope for a couple targets and he might find the end zone. That's very valuable. And I mean, if you chased uh, 15 rushing attempts all season, you would have the running back 14, you know, on average for running backs, you get 15, at least 15 attempts. So, you know, that's, that's, that has a lot of value. And um, I would agree with Kevin though, after this year, you're, you're probably talking a contingency plan, but I think he's played his way into a roster spot. I, I would expect him to stick with the team, which you're looking for guys who make the team will have an opportunity. If Brees Hall has any setbacks or, you know, let's say he gets another injury, Zonovan's kind of that guy to step up. I'm not worried about any uh, Ty Johnson's. I think Ty Johnson's more that Michael Carter role. He always has been, um, which he's completely obsolete when Michael Carter's in there playing. So I, I do have some interest in Zonovan. I, I think he's run really well. Um, you know, he's, he's got great size for the NFL, 5'10", like 2'15". Um, and he, he, he runs hard and he's done well when the ball's tossed his way, you know, to be fair to him. So I, I do have interest in Zonovan Knight at that cost. But if you are a team who just picked him up for some fab and you can squeeze out a third, that seems fine. And a fourth, I, I'm also fine with taking that. Uh, come back in next year in the draft and try to swing for two darts instead of just one because Zonovan Knight probably offers very little to your team going into next season just because he is that kind of contingency plan player. But if you're a competing team, I would not I would not be selling him. Um, I, I'd probably be looking to use him unless if he really is just that deep of excess. And if you're looking to buy and you're not necessarily that competing team, like if you aren't a team at the top who needs, you know, the fill that we said he he can do for you. Um, I, w- I wouldn't be buying now. I'd look for the offseason. I think he'll be a name that people will forget about. And you remember what he did as a player when he's given the opportunity and he'll be, he'll be absolutely free um, come early next season when he's playing next to no snaps. If Brees Hall is back, of course. So there's a guy in the future. I will keep in the back of my mind to target when he becomes free. Kevin, would, if you're a competing team, are you, are you down with sending the third for, out of a night yeah i think it's totally fine i think third round picks are not not trying to say expendable but i think that's certainly the fine price to pay for you know a guy like that that can maybe shore up your contending team so totally totally fine with that and it's really you know skylar said you forget about it's hard to forget a guy named zonovan uh, <laughs> i'll throw that out there bam. his nickname is bam i mean come on yeah the vibes are good that's true i mean i i think just like Almost universally, if you can get a running back who sees 15 to 18 opportunities a game for a third round pick and you're a competing team, that's just like something like in general, I'm, I'll just do like regardless of the person, name, whatever, if they're just getting that amount of touches, because that's the way running back works. Like that's that's an RB2 in the NFL for us in fantasy. 